Yeah. I don't go outside. Yeah. Baby, I'm not your type. Yeah. Cause if I bet inside. Yeah. I think I hate my life. Yeah. What you know about being bipolar? Okay, now it's time to install the wastegate. Here she is. But before I get into that, we're going to take it apart and clean it. A little carbon up in there. Now I got these originally like a three hundred about two hundred and seventy dollar wastegate. Goes three hundred bucks. The guy I bought from has has like he said maybe a hundred miles on it because it was too small for his boosted Mustang. It had, uh, it uh, led to boost creeping for him. So I got for, I got off him for 160, which is a pretty good deal for only 100 miles of use. This being a good wastegate, it should last me a nice long time. So yeah, I'm gonna tear it apart and I'm gonna clean it. Okay, I got it fairly clean. So we're gonna begin installing this bad boy now. I'm gonna yank off the uh, cheap Chinese one, and once I get up underneath the car, I'll bring you guys with me, and then you'll see me remove it. And there is the cheap Chinese wastegate about to come out of this hog. We're going to take her out, dispose of it properly. Probably hit it with a hammer or something. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to get this thing out. And then we will begin installing the Turbo Smart one. Okay, the wastegate is out. Now, uh, I was warned about this by somebody else. He said that his wastegate bolts came loose. Mine were freaking barely hand tight. So... I'm guessing that's due to the cheap bolts CX Racing has included with their wastegates, which I can, which is plausible because cheaper hardware will have a little bit more play in the threads when you th thread it in. So I'm hoping the newer, the newer ones, not the new ones, the better ones have less thread play. So I will do that. I will put I will put each of these bolts into the holes down there, and I'll see there's a difference in the play in the threads. Okay, so we're back down here. There is the wastegate flange. Uh, the upper bolt, that is the cheap included one. The lower bolt is the better one that came with the Turbo Smart wastegate he sent me. So they're both threaded in the whole way through. So we're going to check the play now. So here's the cheap bolt. Quite a bit of play in that. And then the good one. There's a little bit less. I mean, there's still some play, but you can see it's not nearly, look at that. There's a lot more play in this bolt. And even in and out, there's some play. That's a little bit less. So yeah, the bolts do make a difference. The hardware does. So one more time, well, there's a cheap one. And then here's the good one. Less play for sure, holy cow. So I will also put a nut even on the back side of the good ones, just to be safe. I should really go out and get some high temp thread locker, huh? That'd be smart. I'm not sure. I'll have to see what the temperature rating is of the red stuff. But yeah, that right there is take that consideration, guys. Cheap bolts will also play a factor in the looseness of the wastegate. And I also noticed when I was taking off the one, I was taking off the wastegate, it was just loose enough for it to actually break the gasket and leak a little bit. You see the dark spot? Right there, the gasket failed and was leaking, so we'll take care of that. I got a hold of some multi-layer seal gaskets for the new Turbo Smart one. So that was a pretty cool experiment to see that indeed the cheap hardware does make a difference. Another piece of, of information for you. Let me get, oh, it's underneath the car. I was going to get my flashlight, but it's down underneath the car, so we'll just use this little mini flash I have. Uh, the included wastegate, if you do decide to use it, I don't recommend it, but if you do decide to use it, they had these bolts threaded, like it was a threaded, uh, tapped and threaded into the wastegate. You have to drill those out, like I did, because you can't, well, you can't obviously bond two threaded flanges together. It doesn't work. So, yeah, you have to drill those out. I don't know why the heck they would thread that side. One more thing uh, about this supplied wastegate. I'm not sure if everybody had this problem like I did. 
But once again, if you decide to use this wastegate, which I don't recommend, blah, 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 uh, the uh, crush washers supplied for that banjo bolt. Okay, there you can see it, kind of. There is a, like, indentation in the wastegate. It's like a, a horseshoe shape. You see the two ridges in there? Hopefully this thing will focus. Those, yeah, right there, the two ridges. You see the two ridges? I had to grind down one side of the crush washer so it sat in there. Because if you did not dremel it down or sand it down, it sat on top of that ledge the crush washer did. You go to tighten it, it would not freaking seal. So I had the wastegate installed in the damn car and want to tighten this fucker down. I got it all tightened and I was smart and tested by blowing through the hose I had attached to, hit to this. And I heard it freaking leaking, so I was like, what the heck? And it was leaking around that damn crush washer because it was sitting on top of the, that lip. So I had, to sa I had to sand down an edge of the da dang crush washer so it fit in there. Once again, a little, little weird thing to worry about. Another thing, actually, these wastegates always have problems coming in the mail with all the bolts loose. Mainly the inside one that holds the, uh, crap, what do they call that? I don't even know. I guess, I would just call it a plunger, I guess, I'm not sure. The valve, where it bolts onto the diaphragm, the diaphragm cup, I guess you call it. The one Allen head bolt that holds that in, upward, they like to come loose right out of the, right out of the freaking box. So that causes failure in the your engine. So when I first got this, I took it all apart, made sure every bolt was tight, and they sure enough, the ones inside were fairly loose. So if I didn't if I didn't know to check that, I, I could have been screwed. So I'm gonna say it again, I do not recommend using the supplied wastegate. Okay, I took the wastegate apart to show you guys what I was talking about earlier. These little Allen head bolts right here, there's four of them. They were loose. They hold on the, the valve for the for that see the valve in there? Holds it on to that. Yeah, they were pretty loose. And then that copper washer dilemma. Right here. You'll be able to see a lot a lot better now I was talking about. So I'm gonna zoom in on this freaking thing. There's that little fucker. Okay, see how it's engraved and dented, whatever you want to call it. I had to take a, take one of the crush washers. I had to sand down either side. Like that. So it would freaking fit. So it would fit in there. I'm going to try to hold this dang thing up. Cause I won't, hold on a second. I'm sorry. Alright. Yeah, I had to grind it down like that. So it would go in there like that. Because whenever it was the full, sh the full shape of it, it would not freaking fit in there. Remember how I keep stressing to not use the cheap included hardware, like the gaskets and hoses? You've seen that piece fall? Because I only had this car turbo for maybe 3,000 miles. This is the included gasket for the wastegate of the CX Racing Kit. Very hard. Hear that? Very brittle. Yeah, that's why you do not use included gaskets with this kit, because they are cheap. Okay, I'm going to uh, put the spring in this. He gave me two springs. One's a seven pound and one I think one's a ten or twelve pound. So I'm just gonna put the seven pound in there and then screw on the cap. And then and, and the adjustment will be at the boost controller. So yeah. And also why I like why I like this Ultra Gate 38 by Turbo Smart is it's one of the quick callers. So you just use the the supplied wrench. My little goodie box, I guess you'd call it. This uses a supplied wrench just to uh, quickly loosen it, th throw it off by hand. So it makes it easier to uh, swap out the springs compared to, you know, the multiple bolts like on this one. So yeah, another cool, little, another cool little thing is I recommend a quick change wastegate. It makes things a lot easier. Okay, the wastegate is prepped. I got the seven pound spring inside and the collar tightened on top. And then we're going to put on these gas. We're we'll using these gaskets. They are a multi-layer steel. They're good quality. Should be nice. Only thing I'm worried about with these is uh, I'm probably going to have to retorque them, retorque the bolts after so many hours or whatever, because I feel like this is going to compress down quite a bit. So I'll I'll, double, I'll definitely retorque the bolts after a few hours of them sitting. 
So yeah, we're ready to install this bad boy. Oh yeah, and do not forget your fire ring. The fire ring is right here. Because my one acquaintance uh, has this kit installed in his car. And he forgot to put his fire ring in the wastegate. Just like that. It goes on the exhaust side. He forgot to install this fire ring into his cheap one over there. And basically his turbo was free spooling. So he wasn't building any boost until about 4,000 RPM. <laughs> so right after he installed it, everybody's like on Facebook. like, oh, hey, how's it going? And he's like, it's building boost at 4,000 RPM. I'm like, what? So like, mine builds boost at like 3,000, 2,500. I, I couldn't figure it out. I know, you know, because every engine could be different. Maybe it was just the variables of his engine. I'm not too sure. So I just kind of let it go. And then about a month later, this turbo started crapping out on him. And what happened was it was free spooling. So it was spooling too much and just shortened life dramatically without the fire ring. And then he, he took the whiskey off. He's like, oh, shit. He's like, dude. I was like, yeah. I, was like, I forgot my fire ring. I was like... I didn't know what it was. I was like, what, what what's the f and then I realized, oh, is that the thing is that the thing in the wastegate? He's like, yeah, I forgot to put it in. I'm like, oh well that explains why your turbo dumped because it was just free spooling. So yeah, no, do not forget your firing. Important. So that'll go in. And then the gas oh, dang it. I hate when that happens. And then the gasket, and then she'll tighten down. Just like that. So we'll do that next. Put this bad boy on. Okay, I was gonna use this nut. I mean bolt to mount the wastegate, but it's a little bit too short to add my nut on top for extra security. But don't worry, we're still not going to use those cheapo ones. I went out and got more good stainless steel bolts, and this one's even a little bit longer, so we'll be able to get some more thread bite from nuts on top. So even though the flanges are already threaded, we'll probably have about that much thread sticking out. So then I'll put a nut on top of that just for extra security. So with the mixture of a good quality bolt, a locking washer and a nut on top with thread locker we should be good to go because I did to go out and get some thread locker too so it's just, it's just a matter of putting on the wastegate so we're gonna do that right now okay there's the turbo smart wastegate installed into our car now I'm going to take an, ex an uh, inspection mirror and I'm going to check the flanges and make sure they're sitting flush on the wastegate so I'm going to zoom in, we're going to inspect the flanges. You can see that one, it's pretty good. And then we'll check this side. Looks good to me. Looks like it's sitting nice and flush. Looks good. And then you can see the, the threads hanging out on the bottom there and that's where we're going to put our nuts for double security okay our nuts are on and there is the nut in the mirror right there same on both sides and the wastegate is nice and tight uh, so that should include conclude the install of this turbo smart wastegate wasn't too bad a little tight in here but it is what it is and we got her in there is one more thing I want to include into this video and that is how I mounted my little boost controller right here so stick around in a few moments you'll see how I installed it it's pretty neat so I want you guys to see how I did that okay I was trying to mock up a place to mount my boost controller uh, at first I was going to epoxy a magnet to it and stick it to the body right there so I found a really strong magnet, and I tried cutting it down, but they just, they just kind of flake apart if you try cutting them. So I'm like, dude, what am I going to do? I was kind of stressing over it. I was like, I want this thing to be in a nice, clean spot, easy to get to. And that was the best solution to magnetize it to that. Now, a crazy thought freaking dawned on me. A real crazy thought. On these cars, you know, you have the rear O2 sensors, and the harnesses are snapped into the fuel rail. They snap into this, this piece right here, this little wire holder. That originally clips into that square. Okay, so I have had these off for a long time. Had them laying on my floor down here by my oil rack. And one day, I accidentally kicked one, this one up underneath. I kind of forgot about it, it just kind of disappeared. And I was standing here thinking, like holy, f I was like, holy cow, this might work. So I bent down underneath there, underneath that rack. 
and I picked this up from the ground, okay? So in this body, since my wires are tucked, I'm left with these factory holes for fasteners, whatever, holding the wires. I took this thing, I elongated the snapping part by sticking a socket in there and bending it around the socket to get this part bigger. And then I put an O-ring on it. See the O-ring? Okay. So that hole right there, this snaps in the O-ring. And then my boost controller is going to snap in just like freaking that guys and that is one of the best ideas I've had in a long time so now the silicone hoses are gonna run cleanly off my turbo wham then run the one down and to the wastegate and whenever, whenever I need to adjust the boost controller I just simply grab it pull it out hey there again guys that was the installation video of the wastegate so it's a good brand. Turbo Smart is a good brand. Just make sure you're getting a genuine one. So that wasn't too bad. A uh, little tight spaces in there, but I have small hands, so I was able to get in there. One thing I would recommend doing: take extra, take take extra time and remove the engine mount arm on that side. Lots more room. I left mine in because I can get in there. And on well, my first time getting up in that wastegate, messing around, so I was I knew what to expect. So, as far as tomorrow, i got some exciting news. My boss is coming in clutch, and quite literally, because he is let, he is helping me get my clutch. My twin disc from the UK. A while ago, we were talking about the build, and I said, all I really need now is the clutch to put power down. And then he's like, well, how soon do you need that clutch? I was like, it's not really a hurry or anything, but I would like to have it. He's like, well, if you really want to, I can lend you some money. Uh, just work it off because after work here I go to his house and maintain his property type of deal like do the landscaping and all that and so he said just I'll give you the money but just keep track keep track of your hours and work it off and yeah so at first I was like no I, I would rather work for the money and then pay for it myself but I was thinking like it's the same thing either way like I'm working either way to, you know what I'm saying, so, so today he asked, do you want to do that deal, I'm like, sure, so, I'm excited for that, so that's going to be a good deal, although I'll be, I'll have to put lots of hours in to pay it off, it's going to be worth it, so yeah, uh, what's next is going to be installing my vacuum block, which is, I got in the mail, I got all my silicone hoses in the mail, still, still waiting for the one inch size to hook up the idle air control valve to the intercooler piping, so I have to order my DISA block off plate. So I'm probably gonna order them both, the clutch and that plate, because they're coming from the same person. So I'll plate, I'll order that stuff. I'm trying to think what else. There's a lot. There's a lot more to do. Not really a lot, but just buttoning stuff up, pulling off the turbocharger, and getting my my drain mocked up, and retightening all the clocking bolts, putting it back on, running all the running all the coolant hoses. I got transmission mounts to put in once I do the clutch. You know, I'm gonna do transmission mounts. Probably going to service a remain seal, and then I'm going to replace my Guibo, Guibo, whatever it's called, the flex disc. I got a new one of the, not new, but it has like 40 miles on it. Mike Dodge sold to me, it's an OEM, so thank you again, Mike, for all your help. So we're going to get all that stuff done, and I got to, like I said, I got to get to working on that floor eventually in the back, because if not, I'm going to destroy that freaking subframe mounting points. They're already ripped out of the floor. I just have steel plates sandwiching it, so it kind of it's kind of stopping any more damage from happening. But I can see that causing more damage later, so I'm going to just build that freaking custom like mini cage back there. I got plans. I have plans sketched out. It's just a matter of bringing them to life. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this wastegate video. Always some stuff to look out for, like the cheap waste, the cheap bolts, like small things like that can make a huge difference. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think of it until you, you know, check out for yourself. So yeah, until the next video, hope you guys are enjoying yourselves watching me. Uh, I enjoy making the videos for you. So until next time, I will see you guys later.